I just right here at Chandler's and we're going to do a planting. <laughs> we're doing a planting for his crocodile enclosures. And I brought all these exciting plants from Apopka and we're going to plant it out. We're going to take a look. Hey Chandler, can we see some snakes before we start the croc plantings? You know, your channel's like real zen and peaceful. I feel like this is going to really uproot all the zenness of the channel. So this is roughly like a six foot long Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. And I'm using a really big custom snake hook to bring him out so he's comfortable because he's so big. It's very easy for a snake like this to get uncomfortable having its uh, vertebrae and ribs put on just a little piece of metal to balance. Look at that. Big, beautiful Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. They get bigger than this. I've actually seen them thicker than this, thick as my thigh. He's just a massive snake and I've had him in my collection for roughly, I'd say, whew, I'd say I've had him in the collection for roughly five years or so. And uh, he's not chill, he's not tame. I just know how to work with the animals and get away with certain handling techniques. Obviously, never touch a rattlesnake, never interact with a venomous snake, always walk the other way. Now, if you ever had an open wound, would you ever have to worry about any dried venom on the... Uh... Yeah, 100%. If yeah. you're working with like a spitting cobra, like right here behind me, and you have a fresh wound, yeah, you can get envenomated. So you gotta be real careful. Also, if you work with venom a lot, like dry venom that gets on your skin, on the glass, you're cleaning it, the dry venom goes into the air and you breathe it in. Over time, throughout being absorbed in your skin and through your respiratory system, you could potentially become allergic to venom, which means you'll die from anaphylaxis in a minute or two. So like, let's say this cobra, it bites you, you might have six hours to maybe uh, 10 hours to live if you get envenomated. If you have anaphylaxis because you're allergic to the venom from being exposed to dry venom all the time, you can die in one to five minutes. I know people who have developed allergic reactions to snakes and then they get a simple bite that should have taken eight hours to kill them and they end up dying in five minutes because they can't breathe from anaphylaxis. So it's, it has to be considered. If you work with venomous reptiles, what are you working with? Why are you working with it? And how does it like benefit what your mission is? Education, breeding, whatever. For me, I just don't keep spitting cobras. I have one and that's it. I used to have one that a friend gave me from Africa that was like six plus feet, a black neck spitter with a red neck. It was really cool. But every time you worked with it, it would go and spray everyone with venom. And literally, you work with that snake for a couple of years, you will become allergic, depending on your body type. I could, just thinking about it, my like sideburns are itchy and I, I get like an itchy placebo effect. So um, I try to limit the amount of spitting cobras because I already keep the world's most venomous snakes. It would suck to get bit by one of the snakes in here and die faster from anaphylaxis and not actually the venom itself. So you just gotta be careful and work with these guys. We've got a really crazy pair of cobras. So I'm gonna take the cobras out and when I come over here, just back yeah. up. They're not super defensive, but if you got bit, you're going to probably die. This is the most venomous species of cobra in Africa. <laughs> it's no good. Definitely no good. I'm gonna leave this open a little bit. I'm gonna put one in there and bring the other one on top of the cage. We're gonna put his girlfriend. This is a, a pair of Cape Cobras from Africa. And they, they're not super defensive. They're not super bad to deal with, but they're highly venomous and you gotta be careful. So this is the female. She's the bitey one. She'll bite snake hooks. She'll bite anything in her path. So we're gonna be smart and get her straight into the holding receptacle. We're gonna close it and then I'll show off the other one real quick. So he's a little bit more chill. He's easier to deal with. This is some shed skin. If you guys want some cobra skin to take home, you can take that if you want. You wanna bring it for Martha? Well, Martha. Tell her you found it in the bathroom. There we go. So check this out. This is probably the most spectacular looking cobra in the world. So this is the Cape Cobra from Africa, the most venomous cobra in Africa, drop for drop, in comparison to the other species of you know, mambas and boom slangs and whatnot. So out of uh, just cobras in general, he's the most venomous. The most venomous snake in Africa of all the species is the boom slang. And then following would probably be mamba, Cape Cobra, and these other species. So this snake can get like six to maybe seven foot, and they come in brown, they come in uh, like a reddish color, they come in bright yellow like the sun, and then they come like this where it's like speckling like a cheetah, and they can also have these big black blotches amongst the, the yellow. So I'll hook him real quick so you guys can get a better look because he's not too dangerous to get a little bit closer to. The rattlesnake will strike out. This guy is not gonna be able to strike out too far, but look how beautiful, it's like a Dalmatian or a cheetah. 
And uh, his name is Honey, and his girlfriend's name is Mustard. Really cool snake. They literally say that the Cape Cobra's venom is so toxic, it rivals black mamba venom. Black mambas can drop you dead in 15 to 10 minutes. So that really puts into perspective how toxic this cobra is. And this guy's gonna be eating other snakes. So he'll hunt down puff adders from Africa. There's actually a puff adder right behind your head in that cage. They've been documented to eat puff adders. They've been documented to eat other species of snake. And uh, I love them. I wanted this species of snake since I was a little kid. Obviously being a little kid, you're not gonna be keeping venomous reptiles, but uh, many years after having my venomous reptile permit, finally yellow Cape Cobras became available and I was able to get them for a really good price. So I'm super happy about that because this is one of the most spectacular looking snakes in the world. How many times the snake are gonna hit you? What happened? How many times the, do you not have an accident for the snakes? Do I have uh, anti-venom? How, uh, how many accidents you? I mean, I've had a lot of close calls over the years, but the only time I've almost uh, straight up died was in India when I got bit by an Indian cobra and I had to get my finger amputated when I got back home because the venom ate wow. my finger away. Yeah, and that's nothing. The venom itself could have shut my respiratory system down, my nervous system down, and then you can't breathe and then your brain can't function after about five to six minutes with no oxygen. So if that venom traveled and I went unconscious out in the rice field that I was making a, making a little educational video on, uh, these snakes, if I wasn't able to cut the blood flow off, I would have died. So they're very serious. These animals are no joke. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm comfortable with these animals, but they will put you in a coffin. They're no joke. Every single one of these snakes will kill you. There's probably only two species in here that if you get bit, you could survive without anti-venom. Most of the species in here, if you get bit, you're going to die. Yeah. It's no ifs, ands, or buts. Now, Caesar, if we had these snakes, how many ladies would work for me? Nobody. Dude, Maybe snakes are not the way to pick up girls, trust me. I am not, I don't meet that many girls. <laughs> yeah, so this will bring in a lot of butterflies and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, it's That'd a butterfly cool. and it's, it's, it's called the Bogota flower. It looks, I think it looks very tropical. Very, I like it. I'm Southeast Asian. Okay, let's unload all these plants. Imagine the caiman or like little baby Orinoco crocodiles chilling out underneath these. What's, so, what are those? Th those are... That looks like something out of Costa Rica. Those are Imperial Red. Oh, no, sorry, this one. Oh, oh this right here. The, oh, this is from Thailand. This is... Oh, cool. really? This is Thailand Giant. Oh, that's probably where I've seen these in Thailand. You can get all this planted in one hour, right? I've got to go somewhere. <laughs> can you make it like 45 minutes? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. I'll try, I'll try, you maybe plant, I don't know how many, but I'll try. Okay. Blink twice. Blink twice if he's torturing you. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clumper. This is a clumper that only gets like three or four feet tall. Oh, that'd be good. This would be good for like the edge of the pond. Yeah. Nice coverage. Damn, every single one of these enclosures is going to be so nice now. Let me dig the holes, dude. You're sweating like hell. I don't. I feel bad. I sweat all the time. Nice diamond earring. Is that real? <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah. some bling. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Know, you told me what you wanted the pants and nothing else to you. No, you're about to pass out. Let me dig these holes. Come on. No, 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 no. I got it. I can dig a hole. What I would do first is try to come up with the design. Caesar and Chandler, where do you want to put a banana? All right, pressure, pressure, pressure. Mmm, banana. Uh -huh. <sighs> want a banana probably right about there yeah and the, there's sun all over this spot earlier in the day just now because of the woods you get shade tall alocasia here tall banana there then we've got the cordy lines, red and yellow here to give us color. Then those are the Thai giants. Those are gonna get a big screen. Those are gonna get six feet tall. We got some red here. We got some yellow here. So this will all be one enclosure. This will all be one enclosure. That whole row will be one exhibit. Okay. These animals are gonna have lots of land space so I can train them safely. I would get three of, I got two here. I'd get three I of can these. grab them. This man's got a broken shoulder. He's grabbing everything. This man's crazy. 
Mike, I yes. really love these. These are gonna be nice around the ponds. I think this would look great for backgrounds. Here you can put those three feet apart. You go like that. Okay, sorry. You go like this. Eh, okay. So like, will this have enough? Yeah, it'll, it'll get sun. Yeah. It's just the time of day right one, now. One more, Caesar, can you bring? I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Move! You said good or bad? No, that's, that's good only three for the, you see maybe. No. Maybe that's grow with a lot of Chandler wants three. Say it again. Yeah. No, Chandler wants three, Caesar. <laughs> Caesar, you can do it. You, you can run away if you want. I don't need to put too much clothes to plant. Okay. It's bad. All right. If you ever want to leave and come work with me, you can. <laughs> just think about it. Just think about it. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Like, the camaraderie between all of you. It makes it a very interesting channel to watch. Wow, I really like these. Can you show us some of your crocodiles before we get going? Here's Miss Toothy. She's a beautiful Cuban crocodile, critically endangered, and actually the same crocodile that bit my leg roughly two years ago. You guys wanna see Nadia? Let's see. So this is Nadia. She's a Siamese crocodile, critically endangered from Asia, and this is the crocodile going in the first enclosure that I finish. Here, let's get a better look at her because the chain link is kind of messing it up. Let me just get this unlocked. She's really spunky. Watch how she, oh crap. Uh-oh. Nadia. Hey, baby. Oh, shoot. So the cool thing about the new enclosure is it's gonna have way more space to work with this crop. Whoa! Way more space to work with this crocodile. So this is Nadia. She's my beautiful Siamese crocodile, critically endangered and a croc that my friend was nice enough to gift this facility. He rehabilitated this crocodile. She was neglected by the first owner, but now she's thriving. Ooh, and she's a beast. Woo! Oh. Chandler? Chandler? Hey, you okay? She was literally, she was literally around like five feet. Now she's six and a half feet long. She's a beast. Whew. This is Anakin. So this is a saltwater crocodile. This is what's found through Asia, Northern Australia, uh, parts of India in the Southern area. And these guys are the largest reptiles on the planet. So the record's over 20 feet long. Uh, the biggest one caught out of the wild in the last like 15 years was Low Long, and he was like 21 feet long. Huge saltwater crocodile accused of eating kids off of canoes on the way to school in the Philippines. And Anakin's, he's probably, Anakin's probably about like two plus years old, and he's pushing three feet, so he's got a good size on him. And as soon as Ziggy's out of this enclosure, he's going to go in there for a little bit. I'm sure six months later we're going to put him in a real exhibit because he's going to blow up. They're the fastest growing crocodilians in the world. They come from areas right around the equator, so it's hot year round. They don't have to worry about winter, and there's lots of good food. So heat, food, and space, the equation to grow a large reptile like a croc. How cool is he? Big boy. All right, let's put him back. It's not gonna work. Oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you're pretty friendly, huh? Huh, oh, wanna give me a kiss? She's super friendly, great with kids. Just let her sniff you. Uh -huh. All right, back inside, Mama. My beautiful Amazon tree boa somebody donated. That was a great shot. <laughs> yeah. Which crocodile is going in here? I'm going to put Nadia, the Siamese crocodile that just chased me around in that pen back there, the beautiful six plus foot croc. And she'll probably just be in here for maybe like a year or two. And then once she gets too big, she's going to go to a giant natural lagoon. It's almost 11 acres here, and it's a lot of big, thick, wooded area. And we're going to put big natural lagoons for these larger crocodiles. So this is just for her little, like, grow out kindergarten play area. So she can get a little bit bigger. Then after a year or two, it's time to upgrade to an even bigger place with a boyfriend and maybe some other girls to hang out with. 
Well, it's really great visiting with you today. Caesar and the guys did a great job planting and I'm gonna, exciting. It's gonna be great to come back here and see the crocs in all these pens. I fucking love you, Tom. Oh, seriously, I really do. I cannot thank you enough. Sorry for cursing, but you were- Can nothing. I put that on YouTube or not? Yeah, I mean, just bleep it if you want okay. for your channel. Okay. But it shouldn't affect your channel really. No, but because I got to do it, I got right, it says for the advertisements, they got to say, is there any foul language and- Yeah, if you just take out the audio when I say put a bleep, but seriously, you have been nothing but nice to myself, uh, to Wild Florida, to Canon, to all these different people that have wildlife. You're helping us save money and you're making our animals live a nicer, more green life. Like, look how beautiful this pen looks. I mean, it would have looked cool, you know, with grass and two palm trees, but now this is all going to grow out and be like a jungle and provide so much shade for this crocodile. And it's going to make it more exciting. So when I go in here, she has more spots to hide in and ambush me. So it'll be fun. <laughs> and then in the future, you can come back and see this crocodile chase me around and we'll take a big pole. You can stand on the outside of the enclosure and you can get the crocodile to jump up for food. Okay. We'll do that in the future. Stay rooted and, and reach for, for the, the sun. sun. We will see you next week and don't forget to like and subscribe.